Hey guys, this is C.E. Madison and welcome back to Saturday Night Spotlight. I know two weeks has been a very, very long time for me to update anything or say anything or telling you all exactly what was in the news. The first week um, I was working on different projects and I will kind of show you the thumbnails of those projects at the end of Saturday Night Spotlight just to kind of show you exactly what I've been working on. There's been projects that I'm working inside and outside of Cinelania Review so I'm trying to put those into high focus and big focus. Um, this past Saturday I actually made a video with one of my closest friends that you can see here if you're interested. It was just something little fun, something that we could do together and I have been told a few times that you guys do want to see more of her. We'll try to make that happen. If there's anything you want us to discuss or go over, let me know because um, there are some things that she don't care for that I take to heart and the topic and the subject will just kind of die. <laughs> Um, so if there's anything, let me know first and then we'll go from there. I know her and I have been talking about a certain film that she's never really seen before, but it's a film where the genre is something that I can't really stand for. So the next time we see her, we'll discuss on how we're going to do this and then her and I will do a partnered uh, Let's Review. So without further ado, Let's go ahead and kind of discuss the first thing on our agenda. So the first thing that I noticed last night before I went to sleep at 3 a.m. in the morning because I'm still sleep deprived of the last project that I did is Studio Ghibli sets its new animated film for the winter of 2020 and it is called Aya and the Witch. Now, what brings a total shocker about this film is that this is Studio Ghibli's very first CG animated feature film. So that was kind of a mind blow to all of us because the one thing that Studio Ghibli is certainly known for is their artwork, is their stories. Recently I viewed a uh, A to Z best anime films and I can put that in the link for you guys to see and the majority of those films were actually Studio Ghibli films. So this is kind of a new turn for Aya and the Witch. So Aya and the Witch is actually based on a 2011 children's novel titled Earwig and the Witch. The official synopsis of that book is, quote, in this enchanting introduction to Diana Wynne Jones' magical and funny work, Earwig is a fearless young orphan. When she finds herself in a house of dark magic, she does whatever she can to adapt, especially if it means that she'll learn a little magic herself. So continuing on with the synopsis, not every orphan would love living at St. Morwell's home for children, but Earwig does. She gets whatever she wants whenever she wants it, and it's been that way since she was dropped on the orphanage doorstep as a baby, but all that changes the day Bella Yaga and the Mandrake come to St. Morwell's disguised as foster parents. Earwig is whisked off to their mysterious house full of invisible rooms, potions, and spell books with magic around every corner. Most children would run in terror from the house like that, but not Earwig. Using her own cleverness, with a lot of help from a talking cat, she decides to show the witch who's boss. It is co-production by Studio Ghibli, uh, NHK, and NEP. Um, no detail yet on the theatrical release, but it looks like we're looking at winter of 2020. And there's no word yet whether or not it will be released on HBO Max due to the studio's partnership. It is likely that it would get a debut on Warner Media's recent release streaming services. Um, this is actually the first I've heard of Warner Media, but yeah, it's a culture shock for Studio Ghibli after over 30 years of great animation. We're finally being open to the world of CG for Studio Ghibli. From just the screenshots of Aya and the Witch, it does look bright. Of course, it's with a theme like Aya and the Witch and Studio Ghibli's past, we are to see some dark themes to it, and I just hope they bring the good concept for Aya and the Witch. I don't want to say I'm excited for Aya and the Witch yet, but I'll keep an open mind and I'll just keep an eye on it. I'll give my judgment when Aya and the Witch comes out. So. Moving on to the next topic is, I'm just going to say this really quickly, I do apologize for the late release of Stargirl Episode 5, that should have been out already, um, 
unfortunately there were things that did kind of distract me away from from star girl i am hoping to get episode five i haven't even seen the episode yet i'm so sleep deprived i'm working on these other projects i'm hoping to at least see episode five later tonight and get my episode 5 review up for it Sunday and then we'll continue back to the normal schedule on Monday for Stargirl episode 6 moving on forward. So the next thing I want to discuss is Kingdom Hearts. While we are waiting whether the Kingdom Hearts TV show is a green light or not, on the mobile side we have Kingdom Hearts Union Dark Road which seems to take place just immediately after Kingdom Hearts Union X if you guys have played the game. The events is prior to the rest of the games of the franchise so those big games on the consoles like the PS4, Xbox. And the second game which I'm actually kinda excited on for one reason. The other game that is to be released on Square Enix is called Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. As it suggests and from what we have seen and a little bit of the trailer of Melody of Memory, it is a rhythm game. And I am very, very good with rhythm games. I love it. I love the challenge. And while it appears to be light, you know that there's going to be something dark coming our way. The one reason I am excited about Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory is while Kyrie is kind of like a side character, she is one of the main characters that we will be playing as. And I am excited for it. I really like Kyrie. I love her Keyblade, as you can see on this picture here. It is to be launched sometime in 2020 for the Nintendo Switch, the Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. If you guys want to see me play the game and kind of review it, let me know. It's going to be a challenge because I don't have the right technology to do a gameplay, but I will do my very, very best. So movie wise, we have a biopic of Mike Tyson coming out. Now I'm just going to put this out here just because there's going to be at least one person that has no idea who Mike Tyson is. But Mike Tyson is a professional boxer who competed from 1985 to 2005 and at just 20 years old he holds the record of being the youngest heavyweight champion in terms of boxing. Um, unfortunately in 1992 he was convicted of rape and he was sentenced to six years in prison even though he was released after his third year and he was on parole for the rest of his sentence. And during that time in 1995 he engaged in a series of comeback fights. Playing as Mike Tyson is Jamie Foxx. And what Jamie Foxx has shown us during his recent interview is that he was showing off his transformation. And what I mean by transformation is he was trying to make himself fit to look like he is the same body shape as Mike Tyson. During the interview, Jamie Foxx stated that he has gone through a grueling exercise regimen to prepare for his role as Mike Tyson. And this consists of doing 60 pull-ups, 60 dips, 100 push-ups every other day. His weight during filming would start at 216 pounds and it increased to 230 pounds. The interview was really, really interesting and I really love how Jamie was able to kind of take the pictures and he was scrolling through the transformation to get that same shape as Mike Tyson. There's no title on the Mike Tyson biopic yet, there's no official release date yet, but Jamie Foxx leading the role of Mike Tyson was first announced back in 2014. but. It was put on a six year hiatus just because they're not sure if this film would be made or not. But now it does seem like that we are going to go forward with this Mike Tyson film. And Jamie Foxx has done a really good job with his acting and his presentation. A sample of this is when he acted as Ray, the blind pianist. If you guys have not seen that film yet, I would suggest for you to do so. It's, it was really interesting and it kind of made you think 
my god, this is something that Ray has gone through. And speaking of what this person has gone through, uh, another film coming out in 2020, and I'm actually looking forward to this film versus the Mike Tyson film, is Inmate Number One, The Rise of Danny Trejo. And this trailer dropped, I believe, the beginning of this week or sometime late last week. I'm not sure exactly when it dropped, but when I saw the trailer, my jaw just dropped. I was like, oh my god. And it was just all of the things that Danny was just kind of talking about in terms of his biography. And it's not going to be so much as a biopic. This is more of a documentary, Inmate Number 1, the Danny Trejo story. This just kind of shows him like him growing up and him um, doing the things that he shouldn't have experienced as a kid. I like this. I like how Danny Trejo is like a redemption a redemption person because he's done all of these things through his youth. He was sent to prison. He went to, you know, AA and now he's turning his life around. And there's not many actors that can do something like that. Another one that is is following the redemption path also is Mark Wahlberg because you know Mark Wahlberg did all these things he was very fortunate to think what he has done and to do all these meetings and to turn his life back around and now he's an A-list actor I just can't wait to see what makes Danny Trejo Danny Trejo the first time I saw Danny Trejo is when he played the role as the real uncle in Spy Kids I thought I thought his role was really funny and then I saw him again later in Once Upon a Time in Mexico <laughs> the scene with Johnny Depp and Danny Trejo together it just cracked me up I don't think we should are you a Mexican or a Mexican I'm a Mexican so now I'll get into a little more personal for scintillating reviews. So like I said, I do have so many projects inside and outside of scintillating reviews. So the reviewing is very, very slow right now. I should have um, more content up already, but it's just kind of hard to. But I do have thumbnails created so you guys can see exactly what will be coming your way. And that's why I don't have anything for the summer 2020 30 day challenge yet just because I want to get these projects out first. Because if I do the summer 2020 challenge now, these projects are not going to come out at all. And I just don't want them sitting there in file. I need to get, I need to work on them, I need to get them out. So. With this in mind, I'll just kind of talk a little bit about what upcoming projects you guys will see in addition to the summer of 2020. So we'll first talk with the Let's Reviews. So the first one is Violet Evergarden, and that is the story of a girl who lost her arms in the war, and she is working to be a auto memories doll. And I've seen the show already. I've seen the movie special. I don't think I'll touch the movie special yet on the Violet Evergarden review just because I want to keep them separate, but that doesn't mean that I'll come back to it later. I probably will do a review for the Violet Evergarden special. The next one is Fruits Basket Season 2. Um, due to the delay of COVID, the Weekly scheduling for dubbing has not been very smooth. I think it's been two weeks since the newest uh, Fruits Basket episode was released. That's how much we're waiting. Um, so once we get through of season two of Fruits Baskets, then I'll go ahead and cover the Fruits Basket story. And the next let's review because the announcement of Fire Force Season 2 has been released. I will go back and revisit Fire Force and just kind of talk and just talk my opinions on it. I take Fire Force in a sentimental view. Um, there are a couple of people that I know that are volunteer firefighters and 
what they do is very, very brave, and I and I have to give a high applause to these people. I'm so happy for what they're doing. And when I reviewed Inuyasha, I stated that I would not be reviewing the movies just because I want to keep them separate and they're not related to the storyline. But I did say I would review the films in addition to bringing the hype of Yashihime. And speaking of Yashihime, I'm very, very happy with the numbers and the comments that I've gotten. And I want to try to keep this going and I feel bad for abusing it because I should have had a discussion out already. But no further, some of the things that we'll discuss in this next Yashihime topic is any questions and comments that was kind of left behind in the last Yashihime discussion. Um, I read an article that there were some episodes that we would have to re-watch again. They're known as essential episodes, and I don't think that's I don't think that's right. I don't think there's any essential episodes that we have to watch in order for us to get it when we see Yashihime. Um, and also, who could return? Are there any possible villain side characters that could return back to Yashihime? We don't know. I'll also be doing a review of DC's Harley Quinn and the Garden of Words. Um, those are projects that I still need to work on, but those are in the front line. I think those two are going to be coming out first. So expect either the Garden of Words or DC's Harley Quinn to be the next review. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the beginning of Templars. This is something that my husband and I have been talking on a little bit, and I need to do a little bit more research on it, but we think we know Assassin's Creed Valhalla is the birth of the Templars. So once we kind of write this down on paper just to make sure that it makes sense, I'll definitely be putting that video up, and we think Valhalla is the key of the Templars. And the last thing, somebody ask me if I could do a top 10 best anime. Now, I'm gonna try not to be biased, I'm gonna have my husband's opinion on this list too. So we'll be working on the top 10 best anime. We're gonna list the titles based on the cult following. But if you want to know our top 10 favorite anime, let us know and then we'll do a, and then we'll do another video that is top 10 best anime in our own opinion. Oh, one more thing. I totally forgot. Um, and I don't know how I forgot because this was another project that kept me going. New segment that I'm thinking on bringing up for Cinelania Reviews is something called Let's Comment On. So the goal of Let's Comment On is where I will be reacting to films. And these films are not essentially um, like A-list films like uh, Avengers or DC or Legally Blonde or anything like that. These films are going to be more like Under the Rock. So the first let's review on is something called Paddock. This is an unusual film, but I'm not going to get into discussing Paddock yet. But just keep in mind on the let's comment on and just keep in mind of all these projects that I have coming up. Um, I want to try to get all of them out as much as I can before I touch on new films, new games, new anything like that. But that is it for Saturday Night Spotlight. Thank you guys so much for stopping in and checking out what is going on. If you are interested in any of the future content, click on that subscribe button, hit that bell to be notified for personal videos or all my videos. Leave a like, comment below your opinions, and we look forward to seeing you next week for the new Saturday Night Spotlight. Thanks so much! Our simplest prevention is our biggest protection. Take care of yourselves and others as you practice social distancing, washing hands, and staying at home. Let's get better by starting to make our world better to reduce the spread of COVID-19. See you later on another day.